So my introduction is about what is bioeconomy. And often when we tell our friends um, or family what we're currently doing at work, and then we drop the name bioeconomy, we see a similar face. So by what are you doing? So if you have never heard about um, bioeconomy, that's no problem at all. I hope that after this input, you will get um, to grasp this idea or concept behind it. It's really complex and, and yeah, don't worry, we will get there. So I will try to introduce to you the concept, um, what it entails and what option it holds. Um, and I also wanted to mention that um, Lily and Timor that they developed this toolkit one in this transition to bio project. And this offers also an introduction to bioeconomy with a lot of videos and, and visuals and daily life examples. So if, if you want to, I think it's really interesting to check this out as well. And we will talk about the toolkits also. Um, so coming back to the context, um, as you know, mankind faces some serious environmental and climate problems. Um, due to the production practices, also ongoing fossil fuel extraction releases more carbon in the atmosphere, and this is also contributing to the well-known greenhouse effect. Um, but these problems are already on the political agenda. I think it's not enough, but they are on the political agenda. Um, for instance, there is a European um, bioeconomy strategy, which was adopted in 2018, but also many countries, member states already adopted bioeconomy strategies. And these strategies normally state that the global challenges like climate change and land system degradation, and that coupled with the growing population we're facing now, um, forces us to seek new ways of producing and consuming, and that these new ways of producing and consuming have to respect the ecological boundaries of our planet. And that's what bioeconomy is all about. So how can we as a society treat natural resources in a sustainable and responsible way while also running a thriving economy as we are used to? So the bioeconomy refers to an economic approach that seeks to replace the use of fossil fuels um, with biomass and biomass is, is um, plants, animals or microorganisms. They can be either living or dead. Um, when they're dead, then the only thing is that they cannot be fossilized. But as you know, that takes several thousand years. So normally biomass is everything um, like that. So microorganisms, animals and plants. And the bioeconomy, it entails all industrial and economic sectors that produce, process and handle. So it's a really complex and very big. So it includes the production of renewable biomass, so the agriculture, the conversion of these resources into new products, and it focuses also on waste stream and circularity. Um, so how does it work? It has the circular bioeconomy uses various techniques and they are ranging from very simple techniques such as reusing waste streams to improve the utilization of biomass. For instance, I have a, an example from the Netherlands. There are a lot of tomato plants there and when they're harvested out of the leaves that nobody can eat, the, the boxes are made where they're transported later on. So that would be an example of reusing side streams or waste streams. So in bioeconomy, they talk more about side streams because they say waste actually doesn't exist. You can use every waste side stream. Um, but there are also very complex like techniques in bioeconomy where new materials are built out of, of components of biomass, um, even to bioplastics. Um, so the aim in bioeconomy is always to maximize the efficiency of material flows, especially of the carbon, to mitigate the climate change. Um, so the key message here is that many plants have components that can be extracted and transformed to manufacture materials and chemicals with the same characteristics as fossil-based materials. That's why they can be exchanged. Um, so in, in praxis, how does this look like? Um, there are the biorefineries, so the, the raw materials um, are taken. It can be agriculture residues, um, for instance, from the crop um, parts that cannot be exploited for food or feed, um, the stems 
or the, the brand of crops or organic residues, for example, manure, wood from the forest or algae plankton, etc. And these go then to the um, biorefinery and they will be degrade, uh, degraded um, in, dif in different components. Um, and the intermediate products are then sugar and starch and chemical raw materials, bio oils and gas mixtures. Um, and then these intermediates then go to, to other processing units where the final products are synthesized. And these products are then called bio-based products. In the picture on the right, you can see the present oil refinery and the bio refinery and compare it and see that they can almost do the same. Um, it just seems that the bio refinery can above this also gain healthy food ingredients, nutrients and protein rich animal feed. So there are a lot of options and it's very innovation driven and dynamic, the whole field. Um, and then I wanted to tell you that because we did already some outreach um, activities, also other projects, all of our partners did so. And we collected the question that if we go out there and we, we confront the public who, who doesn't know very much about bioeconomy, what it is about, there come always the same questions and concerns when it comes to bioeconomy. I wanted to present you three questions that I think are very important and they come very often when, when you tell someone for the first time about bioeconomy. And this concern is, is there enough biomass for all bio-based applications? And what our scientists came up with is, um, as the answer is when using biomass, it is important, of course, to focus on application that actually need the carbon atoms present in the biomass. These carbon atoms are used to make building materials, packaging materials, and other textiles. But on the opposite, so energy applications are less preferable since energy demands can often be fulfilled also by other sources like wind or solar energy, um, where the material flow is, is better and the utilization is better. Um, the demand for material application is much smaller. That's important to know than the demand for energy, and it is also much smaller than the demand for um, And the amount of available biomass can, of course, be increased. That's also something the bioeconomy is trying to, to support by using more side streams, so the waste streams, um, by growing bio-based crops and underutilized lands and by breeding better varieties. And in the future, that's also makes also clear that this is very innovation driven. Not all bio-based products will be produced from biomass since other technologies are being developed and produced materials directly for instance, from CO2, for example. Um, the second question that we were confronted with very often is, is bio-based production competing with food production? And the production of food is always, what, what our scientists said, accompanied by the production of large amounts of inedible biomass streams. There's always side streams that you cannot eat. And when these biomass side streams so that's the second generation, it's called like that, that the bioeconomy only focuses on second generation biomass. And when this is efficiently used, then biomass production does not compete with food production. Um, and besides food, people, of course, need also non-food products for shelter, for clothing and furniture, among other things. So it's legitimate to also ask for non-food products. Um, however, high production costs and complexity of production processes hamper the development of bio-based production from non-biomass. So it's still very dynamic and, and a lot of changes are, are being there in research and so on. Um, also, some bioplastics are made from eatable biomass and compete for the same feedstock as food. However, often some parts of feedstock like proteins, which are highly available in food, can be separated into elements that are even then used for food production and sugars um, that you shouldn't eat too much then are used for bioplastics, for example. Um, and currently the demand for, for land for bioplastic compared to the land demand for food is the size of a sherry tomato versus the size of the Eiffel Tower. Um, the third question we very often received was, are bio-based products degradable automatically? And it's not like that. So bio-based 
does not mean is not the, has not the same um, meaning as biodegradable. Even though they're made from biomass material, um, biomass can be processed in a way that the end product does not degrade in the environment or in an industrial composting facility. So many bio-based bio products, however, are biodegradable and they can be distinguished by the seedling logo you can see on the bottom or the OK compost logo, but not all of them are. And just as with fossil products, bio-based products should not be disposed of in the environment. And different bio-based products will degrade at different rates in the environment, depending how they were made, like starch-based, loose-built packaging materials will disappear quickly, but a bio-based polyethylene will, make, will take many, many decades to completely degrade. Um, to give you a an, an summary um, and leave you with a positive view towards opportunities, so what are the advantages of a bioeconomy? Um, they are to assist in climate change mitigation, um, to promote resource efficiency, to seek new ways of producing and consuming that respect the ecological boundaries of our planet. Um, bioeconomy seeks to maximize the efficiency of material flows, especially of carbon, but the benefits of bio-based products must be evaluated through science and research all the time. Um, bioeconomy generates innovation and entrepreneurship, and it introduces innovation in agriculture, aquaculture, forestry, and other industry. And bioeconomy creates new employment opportunities. 